Here's another question from our interview with Brandon Spencer Hartle of the City of Portland. Presented by your Eastmoreland neighbors, bringing you the facts you need and deserve. Let's look at the good and the bad side of this history before we make a designation decision. National Park Service hasn't quite gotten there yet. Hmm. So uh, I often like to, to ask this question of folks. Are, are there any questions that I should have asked you, but I didn't today? Mm. That's the best one. I, I've always <laughs> heard I've always heard that was like a good end of interview question for people too. So um, I think a couple of things. I mean, I think one thing that's, I think one thing that's really important is, and maybe you should have asked is like, what do these proposed code changes mean for, for me if I live in East Moreland? Wait, what mm-hmm. did, why, why does it matter? And I think the important thing here is the National Register process is not a local government process. It's not a land use process. It's a federal listing process. And that means that the city, the city council, the planning commission, the landmarks commission, they don't have the power to, to start or stop or conclude this National Register listing process. And mm-hmm. so whether you support East Moreland National Register District or are opposed or have questions on the ground and practically uh, speaking for property owners and tenants, the local code amendments that are up for consideration by city council next month will determine what National Register listing does and doesn't mean for your Mm. everyday life, for your long-term plans, for your interest in seeing more housing or less housing in the neighborhood. Um, And so while they're technical and while they're bureaucratic, the code amendments really do set a table that may have a meaningful effect on thousands of people's lives in East Moreland years mm-hmm. and the decades in the future mm-hmm. um, and peop- and may have an effect on people who don't even live there today. Mm-hmm. And so I think while it's technical and bureaucratic, um, I do think that to the extent that people are thinking about their future and maybe the future of other people who don't even live in the neighborhood, the city council would really benefit from hearing more about the East Moreland story. Um, mm-hmm. Why, why there was a National Register nomination prepared, what the concerns have been, what people you know think sort of would be missed opportunities in the neighborhood if one policy decision were made versus another. So I think that's, that's really what's on my mind is we want to get these code amendments right and not mm-hmm. just for East Moreland, but citywide, mm-hmm. thinking about you know, what, what's the right approach to historic resources, who gets to make the decisions and under what criteria. So now is really the time for East Moorlanders who want to have um, some input to get that input to the city council uh, before the November 3rd hearing so that that input can be considered. Definitely. And I would say for those of you who don't want to read a whole brick of code amendments, that is okay. Um, Just the perspective into the record of where you're at. People in East Moorland have thought about this a lot. You know, mm-hmm. people have given a lot of time, money, um, emotional energy. Mm-hmm. This would be a great time to let city council, the city council know and staff know where you're at. You know, what what have you learned? What have you seen? And even if it's not, you know, cross this T and dot that I in the code yeah. language, um, this is a great opportunity to give city staff and decision makers one more pass at you know what we've all learned. Sounds like you're saying you don't have to be a lawyer. You don't have to know regulations or, or, or all of these specifics, but tell your story if uh, you think it, it, it deserves telling so that the city can consider it when thinking about these policy choices. Yeah, yeah and talking to someone who's a lawyer and talking to someone who's a, a regulator here, I think you're probably best off if you're not a lawyer or a regulator to give city council the, you know, here's what it means for me. I'm a, That's right. I'm a citizen or I'm a resident and I have feedback. So that would yeah. be really great. Um, and I think the other the other last thing I'll say, and this is a, an important one, um, historic resources have to evolve. Like mm-hmm. they're they're relevant, they're relevant in the future, not just because of their past. Like they're relevant in the future because they serve a purpose. They're valued, um, and and applying regulation to a historic resource that isn't valued and can't be relevant in the future is not a guarantee it gets protected. You know, mm-hmm. that the, the, the regulation alone is not is not a guarantee that we've stopped something from being demolished or changed. It's Mm -hmm. about make, you know, continuing the relevancy of place into the future. And that's a big part of these code amendments is how do we, how do we do the best we can with the regulations to keep these places relevant and allow them to adapt? 
Yeah. So what's the best way for our neighbors to contact you if they want to find out more? Yeah, good question. Um, you can shoot me an email. It's uh, Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N dot Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R at Portland, Oregon dot G-O-V. Um, if you're interested in testifying, you can go on to the Historic Resource Code Project website. And there's a, a link right there that says learn more and testify. Click that. You can just drop your testimony in online, send a letter to the city council. You could uh, sign up to testify on November 3rd. Um, if none of that makes sense to you, just shoot me an email and I'll, I'll send you the links and we can talk more about it. But um, what I look forward to too, Colin, is once these rules are set, um, I think we'll be able to finally have a more concrete discussion about what historic designation would mean for East Moore London. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not, uh, how would I say it? I hope we can get those questions answered before decisions are made. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's really important. Brandon, I really appreciate you taking the time today and sharing this information and, and answering these questions. We're going to uh, try and disseminate this video so that folks in the neighborhood can uh, learn more. And uh, if if we didn't get to a topic that they want to hear, hopefully they can contact you and get their, their questions answered. So really appreciate it today. Thank you, Colin. Look forward to it. And I hope I get to come back and do this again, whatever that future holds. That sounds great. Take care. Visit our website for the full hour-long video with Brandon about how a historic district will impact East Moreland. That's at eastmorelandhistoricdistrict.com.